I've had a couple of disappointments and a couple of five stars. Um, I just found her pointless. I found her story in interesting. Um, it's one of these books that has no plot. It's just her talking. And you've got murder, you've got romance, you've got um, addiction, you've got corruption. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's the middle of July, so it's time to look at the seven books that I've read so far this month. It's been a real mixed bag. Um, I've had a couple of disappointments and a couple of five stars. So, um, in the order that I read them, no, that's a, you know, I'm not doing them in rank order, I'm doing it in the order that I read them. Right, I started off with um, Grady Hendrix's Horror Store. And it's one I saw in the library and it's one I'd heard a little bit about. So I thought, well, it's something a bit different. And it's, I describe it as comic horror. I don't know whether it's meant to be comic horror, but I described it as comic horror. I loved the design. I loved the design, the way that it was laid out as a catalogue um, of furniture and the way that we had order forms and pictures of furniture and the way that as you flicked through the furniture changed from being a sofa or a wardrobe to something more something you'd find in a torture chamber um I love the first part of the book I I love that's the scene setting but I wasn't too sure about the the second part when we got to the horror it it, it I don't know it was almost like comic horror it, it was making a, it to me it was making fun of itself but maybe that's not the idea that behind it but that was the way I read it anyway the second one I read was the winner of the 2017 International Booker Prize and this was a, a Horse Walks Into a Bar by David Grossman and it's set in Israel and it is about a, a 57 year old comedian and you are there at his stand-up show and you have the narrator who is a guy that he's invited along to the show the narrator is this guy called Ash who's sorry Av who's um, been invited to the show by the comedian and he hasn't seen him since they were boys at nine years old so he can't understand why this comedian has reached out to him to come to see the show. And so you have him narrating as this show goes on. So you've got the the comic turn and you've got the narrator. And you see the comedian almost unravelling on stage as he turns from telling jokes to talking about a traumatic event in his life. Not an easy read. It deals with grief and loss and survival and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it, it it was an interesting read. I I did enjoy. I I enjoyed it. But it's not an easy read. The next one was a net galley arc, and it was all the broken places by John Boyne, and uh, that comes out on the fifteenth of September, and this is the sequel to The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. But it's a sequel for the adults. Boy in the Striped Pyjamas is for the young. The This one is for the adults. And it's the story of Gretel. And she's now 91. Gretel was the, the daughter, the sister in Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. And she's now a 91 year old widow. And she spent her life hiding her true ancestry and always fearing the tap on the shoulder, the arrest. Not because of her crimes, because she was a child at that time. Her father was hanged for war crimes and she is frightened that because she's the child of the father, there will be some 
um, there will be some penalty for her. So she spent her whole life hiding. But when a family arrive in the flat below hers, she is forced with a dilemma because she fears for the little boy who lives there because she fears he's in danger because he's always got injuries. His mother has always got injuries. But she knows that if she's going to act, then the truth about her will come out. So it's this dilemma. Does she reveal her true self to save the boy or does she say nothing? And I, I enjoy that one. It's about cruelty, about love, guilt, shame. And you can't decide whether or not you like Gretel because the book is told present, past, present, past. So we see what she did when she fled, after her and her mother fled after the war and started a new life with a new identity. Next one was a, 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 dis, it was a disappointment for me, really. It was um, Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. And this was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2021. And it's one of the finalists for the Good Housekeeping Women's Prize for Fiction Futures. And it's about Ava, who's 22, uh, a Dubliner who's living in Hong Kong, teaching English. And she's, she did this. It, it's just her narrating her life. Um, she lives with a banker and she forms a friendship with a young lawyer called Edith. And it's set in Hong Kong, but he wouldn't know it was set in Hong Kong. Um, it could be set in Scarborough for, you know, there's, there's very little scene building well the, I didn't find the scene building very clear um, I just found her pointless I found her story interesting um, it's one of these books that has no plot it's just her talking and I I just found that one a disappointment sorry for all those people that loved it next one was a hit Oh, wow, what a hit. Uh, it's another arc, and it's Kate Atkinson's latest, and it comes out on the 27th of September, and it's Shrines of Gaiety, and I loved this one. Loved, loved, loved it. It's set in 1920s London, and we are in the glamorous nightclub scene. Nellie Coker is the matriarch. She's got five or six nightclubs, all extremely glamorous, all with their own themes. She's got six children and she's wanting to preserve her legacy so that she can pass it on to the children. We've also got Gwendolyn, who's a librarian from York, who's come to London to look for two missing children, the niece, uh, one of them being the niece of her best friend. We've got the two girls who are missing, Frida and Florence. We've got a police inspector who has been brought in to try and clean up the nightclub scene to bring Nelly Coker down. You've got all these strands, all these elements, and you've got murder, you've got romance, you've got addiction, you've got corruption. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I loved it. It's unpredictable. Um, oh, wow. I Yes, Kate Atkinson. Um, like John Boyne, Kate Atkinson and John Boyne, they're, they're two of my favourite authors. And Kate Atkinson, wow, 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 wow. Yes, when's the next one out, please? Um, next one was Julia and the Shark by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I picked this up because I've got that arc now of her newest one, which I've got to get around to reading. And this is middle grade and beautifully illustrated. We've got the shadow of the Greenland shark all the way through it. And Julia has gone with her family to the Shetland Isles um, 
because her mum is a marine biologist who is searching for this Greenland shark. And at the same time, it's a story of mental health and Julia's coming of age as she realises that um, her mother is ill and she's how she can help her mother. And you've got the shadow of this Greenland shark all the way through the book. Beautiful. And the final one um, for this month was, again, an, another disappointment, sadly. Um, it was Emma Donoghue's latest, um, Haven, which comes out on the 18th of August. And while I loved Room, and gave, yeah, that was one of my five stars when that one came out, this one just did not do it for me. It's the story of three monks in the year 600 who go off to found a new monastery on a deserted island, Skellig Michael, an island that's inhospitable, no vegetation, just rocks and seabirds. And it's a story of faith, almost obsessive faith and survival and not for me, sorry. So those are the seven books that I read in July. Well, the first half of the month, the first half of this month anyway, because we're only, we're only on the 15th of July now. Um, a very mixed bag. But so far, the top of my seven has got to be Kate Atkinson's Shrines of Gaiety. Loved, loved, loved it. So, I'm going to go and pick up my, see how many I can read in the second half of um, this month. One of them being the newest one by um, Kevin Millwood Hargrave. So, happy reading. Take care. Bye.